Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today we are here to talk about all of the books that are coming out in June of 2023. June is looking like a heavy book release month y'all, especially in the thriller suspense genre. There are a lot of books that are coming out in June. In the interest of time, I try to cap these videos at about 20 releases and so I definitely have 20 to talk to you about today. Y'all know the drill by now. Because these are new releases and not a lot of people are reading them at this moment, I don't know too terribly much about them so I will be relying on the synopses on Goodreads for these books and I will be reading them just to give you an idea to see whether or not you might want to add these to your TBR for a future read. And so because I have so many to talk to you about today, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in, starting with the releases on June 6th. The first one I have to talk to you about today is The Paris Daughter by Kristen Harmel. Kristen Harmel typically writes historical fiction and that is definitely what this one is. Set, of course, during World War II, Paris 1939, young mothers Elise and Juliette become fast friends the day they meet in the beautiful Bois de Boulogne. Though there is a shadow of war creeping across Europe, neither woman suspects that their lives are about to irrevocably change. When Elise becomes a target of the German occupation, she entrusts Juliette with the most precious thing in her life, her young daughter, playmate to Juliet's own little girl. But nowhere is safe in war, not even a quiet little bookshop like Juliet's. And when a bomb falls on their neighborhood, Juliet's world is destroyed along with it. More than a year later, with the war finally ending, Elise returns to reunite with her daughter, only to find her friend's bookstore reduced to rubble and Juliet nowhere to be found. What happened to her daughter in those last terrible moments? Elise's desperate search leads her to New York and to Juliet one final fateful time. I read, I believe it was called The Room on Rue Amelie by Kristen Harmel, and I really enjoyed it. And I think that this sounds like it's going to be a very beautiful, poignant story of one woman's desperate search for her daughter after World War II. I can't even imagine a parent having to give up their child for their own safety during World War II, but I know that it happened quite frequently. And it sounds like this book is going to explore that a lot. So I'm excited to see what Kristen Harmel is going to do with the story. Like I said, I really enjoyed the other book that I read by her. And so this is definitely a hyped historical fiction that is coming out in June. Also coming out on the 6th is the next in Tessa Bailey's A Vine Mess series called Unfortunately Yours. I believe the first one called Secretly Yours came out earlier this year. So she's releasing them pretty quickly. This from what I understand is a series of contemporary companion novels, so not books that you necessarily have to read in any order. After losing her job and her fiancé in one fell swoop, Natalie Voss returned home to lick her wounds. A few months later, she's sufficiently drowned her sorrows in Cabernet and she's ready to get back on her feet. She just needs her trust fund to finance her new business venture. Unfortunately, the terms require she marry before she can have the money. Okay, I can see where this is going. A marriage of convenience, right? You got the trust fund that can't be released until the person is married. That is a trope that's used quite frequently in books. I don't even know if that's a real thing, is it? You'll have to let me know. But Natalie is desperate enough to propose to a man who makes her want to kill him and kiss him in equal measure. August Cates may own a vineyard, but he doesn't know jack about making wine. He's determined to do his late best friend proud no matter what it takes. Except his tasting room is empty, his wine is disgusting, and his buddy's legacy is circling the drain. No bank will give him the loan he needs to turn the business around. And then the gorgeous feisty heiress knocks on his door. Now a quickie marriage could help them both. A sham wedding, a few weeks living under the same roof, and then they can go their separate ways, assuming they make it out alive. How hard could it be? There's just one thing they didn't account for. Their unfortunate, unbearable, undeniable attraction. So this just sounds like it's going to be a cute, fun marriage of convenience. We all know how it's going to end. And predictable contemporary romances are not usually a bad thing. In fact, I think you go into those stories hoping for exactly that. So if you are a fan of Tessa Bailey, this one again is coming out on June 6th. And then what looks to be the final one that I have to talk to you about that comes out on the 6th, The Whispers by Ashley Audrain. She is the author of The Push, which I have not read, but it was very, very popular after it was released. And again, this one is coming out on the 6th. The Loverly sit by the hospital bed of their young son who is in a coma after falling from his bedroom window in the middle of the night. His mother, Whitney, will not speak to anyone. Back home, their friends and neighbors are left in shock, each confronting their own role in the events that led up to what happened that terrible night. The story spins out over the course of one week in the alternating voices of the women in each family as they are forced to face the secrets within the walls of their own homes and the uncomfortable truths that connect them all to one another. Set against the heart-wrenching drama of what will happen to Xavier, who hangs between life and death, or a life changed forever, The Whispers is a novel about what happens when we put our needs ahead of our children. Exploring the quiet sacrifices of motherhood, the intuitions that we silence, the complexities of our closest friendships, and the danger of envy, this is a novel about the reverberations of life's most difficult decisions. So I was actually thinking that this was a thriller because I think like the push was kind of like a suspense thriller, but this sounds more like it's going to be kind of contemporary literary fiction. Hmm, that's interesting, but it does sound pretty good. It sounds like there's going to be some family drama, a lot of secrets possibly revealed. Sounds like something shady might have happened to Xavier. Maybe that's where like the thriller suspense part comes in. I'm not sure. But if you've read The Push and are a fan of Ashley Ardrain, or if this one just sounds good to you, this one again is coming out on the 6th. 
Oop, actually, no, I lied. There is one other book coming out on the 6th that I definitely want to talk to you about. I can't even believe that I forgot this because it's S.A. Cosby's newest release, All the Sinners Bleed. Y'all know that Razor Blade Tears was one of my favorite books of 2022, and I will now probably read absolutely everything this man writes because that book was phenomenal. And so this newest release, again, comes out on the 6th. It says, Titus Crown is the first black sheriff in the history of Charon County. A former FBI agent and security expert, Titus came home to take care of his father and look out for his troubled younger brother. He ran for sheriff to make a difference, especially in the black community, which has so often often been treated unfairly by police. But a year to the day after his election, a school shooting rocks the town. A beloved teacher is killed by a former student, and as Titus attempts to de-escalate and get the boy to surrender, his deputies fire a fatal shot. In the investigation, it becomes clear that the student they shot had been abused by the dead teacher, as well as by unidentified perpetrators. The trail leads to buried bodies and secrets. While Titus tries to track down a killer hiding in plain sight, while balancing daily duties like protecting Confederate pride marchers, he must face what it means to be a black man wearing a police uniform in the American South. Ooh, okay, y'all, so this sounds like it's going to have a ton ton of heavy topics. There is going to be a school shooting. There is going to be talk about police brutality and systemic racism. It's also going to deal with sexual assault because the person who did the school shooting was abused by the teacher and it sounds like there's a larger conspiracy here. So like the teacher was not acting alone. So there is a ton going on in here. It sounds like it's going to be just as dark and gritty as Razorblade Tears and I am 100% here for it. Like I said, I will probably read anything that this man writes. This sounds wonderful. I'm interested to see the take and perspective that Cosby brings to this. So I am hyped for this one. Moving on, on into the 13th, we have Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This is going to be the third novel in her Steminist romance series, which all feature women in STEM. I absolutely adored The Love Hypothesis. That was one of the best fake dating relationship books that I have ever read in my entire life. But then I read Love on the Brain and I was actually really disappointed in that. There were a lot of things that I had problems with in that book. And then on top of that, as a lot of people have pointed out, it's kind of just like exactly the same type of plot as her first book. So I'm not sure what Love Theoretically is about, but I'm really hoping it exceeds my expectations and goes above love on the brain. So I'm entering into this one tentatively. Let's see what it's about. The many lives of theoretical physicist Elsie Hannaway have finally caught up with her. By day, she's an adjunct professor toiling away at grading labs and teaching thermodynamics in the hopes of landing tenure. By other day, Elsie makes up for her non-existent paycheck by offering her services as a fake girlfriend, tapping into her expertly honed people-pleasing skills to embody whichever version of herself the client needs. Honestly, it's a pretty sweet gig until her carefully constructed Elsie verse comes crashing down because Jack Smith, the annoyingly attractive and broody older brother of her favorite client turns out to be the cold-hearted experimental physicist who ruined her mentor's career and undermined the reputation of theorists everywhere. And that same Jack who now sits on the hiring committee at MIT right between Elsie and her dream job. Elsie's prepared for an all-out war of scholarly sabotage but those long penetrating looks not having to be anything other than her true self when she's with him while falling into an experimentalist's orbit finally tempt her to put her most guarded theories on love into practice. I am absolutely going to give this a chance because like I said I loved the love hypothesis so much so I'm gonna go into this one with high hopes and hope that it exceeds my expectations but we're gonna see. Again, this one comes out on the 13th. Also on the 13th is the newest release from Ellen Hildebrand. Ellen Hildebrand is a very prolific author. She typically writes contemporary and historical fiction. Her books are what I would classify kind of as typical chick lit if you want to go in that direction. This sounds like it's going to be ultimately a story about friendship. It follows Hollis Shaw, who seems to have a picture-perfect life. She's the creator of the popular food blog Hungry with Hollis, and she's married to Matthew, a dreamy heart surgeon. But after she and Matthew get into a heated argument one snowy morning, he leaves for the airport and is killed in a car accident. Ooh, okay. The cracks in Hollis's perfect life, her strained marriage, and her complicated relationship with her daughter Caroline grow deeper. So when Hollis hears about something called a five-star weekend, one woman organizes a trip for her best friend from each phase of her teenage years, her 20s, her 30s, and midlife. She decides to host her own five-star weekend on Nantucket, but the weekend doesn't turn out to be a joyful Hallmark movie. The husband of Hollis's childhood friend Tatum arranges for Hollis's first love, Jack Finnegan, to spend time with them, stirring up old feelings. Meanwhile, Tatum is forced to play nice with abrasive and elitist Drew Ann, Hollis's best friend from UNC Chapel Hill. Drew Ann's career as a prominent Chicago sports agent is on the line after her comments about a client's mental health issues are misconstrued online. Brooke, Hollis's friend from her 30s, has just discovered that her husband is having an inappropriate relationship with a woman at work, again. And then there's Gigi, a stranger to everyone, including Hollis, who reached out to Hollis through her blog. Gigi embodies an unusual grace and, as it happens, has many secrets. The Five Star Weekend is a surprising and captivating story about friendship, love, and self-discovery set on Nantucket. It will be a weekend like no other. Okay, so it definitely sounds like a lot of people are coming together, and there are a lot of different personalities that are going to have to clash, and it seems like each one might have their own drama and their own baggage that they're bringing to this trip plus this one person that doesn't really have anything to do with the others as far as we can tell but it says that she has secrets so we're gonna find out what those secrets are. It's not something that I personally am going to pick up but like I said Ellen Hildebrand is a very prolific author. She's a very popular author and so if you are a fan of hers you're probably definitely going to want to pick this up on the 13th when it comes out. Next on the 13th we have a new suspense thriller from Robin Harding called The Drowning Woman. It says this is a deliciously twisted story of friendship, retribution, 
and betrayal about a homeless woman fleeing a dangerous past and the wealthy society wife she saves from drowning who pulls her into a dark web of secrets and lies. Okay, so this sounds like a good Samaritan who gets caught up in something kind of twisted. Lee Gulliver never thought she'd find herself living on the streets. No one ever does. But when her restaurant fails and she falls deeper into debt, she leaves her old life behind with nothing but her clothes and her Toyota Corolla. In Seattle, she parks in a secluded spot by the beach to lay low and plan her next move until early one morning, she sees a sobbing woman throw herself into the ocean. Lee hauls the woman back to the surface, but instead of appreciation, she is met with fury. The drowning woman, Hazel, tells her that she wanted to die, that she's trapped in a toxic, abusive marriage, that she's a prisoner in her own home. Out of options, Hazel retreats to her gilded cage, and Lee thinks she's seen the last of her until her unexpected return the next morning. Bonded by disparate but difficult circumstances, the women soon strike up a close and unlikely friendship. And then one day, Hazel makes a shocking request. She wants Lee to help her disappear. It'll be easy, Hazel assures her, but Lee soon learns that nothing is as it seems, and that Hazel may not be the friend Lee thought she was. Okay, color me intrigued. I have never actually read anything by Robin Harding, but I am digging that synopsis. You have a homeless woman who thinks she's doing a good deed by saving a woman that is drowning, but that woman actually wanted to die because of dire circumstances in her life. And now that woman is coming back asking something of Lee, wanting Lee to help her disappear. But it sounds like there's going to be a lot more to it than that. So I think I'm actually intrigued enough to add this one to my TBR because it sounds really, really good. Another suspense thriller that is coming out on the 13th that says it's for fans of Lucy Foley and Leanne Moriarty is a book called She Started It by Cyan Gilbert. Cyan Gilbert? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her first name, but this is one that is definitely kind of getting some buzz. It says Annabelle, Esther, Tanya, and Chloe are best friends or were as children. Despite drifting apart in adulthood, shared secrets have kept them bonded for better or worse, even as their childhood dreams haven't quite turned out as they hoped. Then one day they receive a wholly unexpected but not entirely unwelcome invitation from another old friend. Poppy Greer has invited them all to her extravagant bachelorette party, a first class plane ticket to three days of white sand, cocktails, and relaxation on the Lux private island in the Bahamas. All right, so I'm already seeing where this is going. We're going to be on an island and bad shit is going to go down. None of them has spoken to Poppy in years, but Poppy's Instagram pics show that the girl they used to consider the weakest link in their group has definitely made good and made money. The first class flight and the island's accommodations are just as opulent as expected, even if the scenic island proves more remote than they'd anticipated. Quite remote, in fact, with no cell service and no other guests. Okay, I see where this is going. The women quickly discover they've underestimated Poppy and each other as their darkest secrets are revealed. The tropical adventure morphs into a terrifying nightmare. Endlessly twisty, sharply observant, and deliciously catty, she started it is sure to shock readers until the very end. Okay, so it definitely sounds like we're getting a remote suspense thriller here. They're on a Caribbean island in the Bahamas, so it's not a wintry isolation thriller. It is more a tropical isolation thriller. There is no cell service. There's really nobody around. And it sounds like all of these women are kind of holding some dark secrets that are going to come out. I don't know if this is going to be in and then there were none situation where one starts dying one by one. I have no idea. It sounds like it could be a quick fun read, kind of like Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. If you liked that book, you might like this one. Yet another suspense thriller coming out on the 13th is Speak of the Devil by Rose Wilding. This is actually one that I thought sounded really, really interesting, but the reviews on it so far are not great. It has 345 ratings and only a 3.61 average star rating, which is not great. It says all of us knew him, one of us killed him. Seven women stand in shock in a seedy hotel room. A man's severed head sits in the center of the floor. Each of the women, the wife, the teenager, the ex, the journalist, the colleague, the friend, and the woman who raised him has a very good reason to have done it, yet each swears she did not. In order to protect each other, they must figure out who is responsible, all while staying one step ahead of the police. Against the ticking clock of a murder investigation, each woman's secret is brought to light as the connections between them converge to reveal a killer. So I really liked the idea of seven women, all with a motive for murder. Which one is the murder? Is it even one of them? Is there going to be like another shocking twist that comes out that maybe it wasn't one of them at all? I'm interested to dive in and kind of see what secrets they're holding and why they would want this man dead. So the premise sounds really interesting, but based on the reviews, it doesn't sound like the execution was great. I still might go ahead and give this one a chance. I'm not sure, but the premise definitely had me intrigued. And then the final one I want to talk to you about today coming out on the 13th is also a suspense thriller. It is The Long Way Back by Nicole Bart. She wrote Everything We Didn't Say and I remember having a positive reading experience of that book but it's also one that I don't remember anything about so it's just kind of slipped my mind. But I would be interested in giving her another chance. The synopsis of this one sounds pretty good. Mother and daughter Charlie and Eva never sought social media fame but when a stunning photo of Eva went viral fame found them. Now after more than two years documenting life on the road in their vintage Airstream trailer the duo has temporarily settled in a tiny Minnesota town. Eva is happily finishing her senior year of high school and applying to college, but Charlie longs for the adventures they left behind. When Eva goes missing less than a week before her graduation, it's Charlie who is immediately suspected of foul play, not just by their fans, but also by the police and the FBI. As a fight about one more road trip comes to light and the truth about the relationship is questioned, Charlie realizes the rosy facade they portrayed online hit a complicated and potentially dangerous reality. Now to clear her name and find out what has happened to her daughter, she'll have to confront her own role in Eva's disappearance.
parents and whether she knew her daughter at all. So I really like the idea of this book examining kind of a complex mother-daughter relationship, but it also sounds like there is a lot more to this. You know, the daughter has gone missing, the mother has to try to find her, and the mother also seems like she might have played a role somehow, possibly indirectly, in her daughter's disappearance. I'm intrigued and I wouldn't mind giving it a shot in the future. Moving on into the 20th, we definitely have some big name releases, starting with Zero Days by Ruth Ware. This says that it is an adrenaline-fueled thriller that combines Mr. and Mrs. Smith with The Fugitive about a woman in a race against time to clear her name and find her husband's murderer. All right, so I absolutely love The Fugitive. It is probably one of my favorite movies of all time, but it also sounds like if this combines Mr. and Mrs. Smith with The Fugitive, that it could have been like maybe a husband-wife assassin duo and now the husband has been killed. I don't know. Let's see. Hired by companies to break into buildings and hack security systems, Jack and her husband Gabe are the best penetration specialists in the business. Okay, so maybe not assassins, but professional burglars basically. But after a routine assignment goes horribly wrong, Jack arrives home to find her husband dead. To add to her horror, the police are closing in on their suspect, her. Jack must decide who she can trust as she circles closer to the real killer in this unputdownable and heart-pounding mystery. I am here for it. That sounds remarkably different from anything else that Ruth Ware has put out before, and I'm really interested to see her take on these tropes, like Mr. and Mrs. Smith and The Fugitive. So, of course, I've already added this to my TBR. I've already read everything that Ruth Ware has put out in the past, and I will absolutely be reading everything she puts out in the future. I'm extremely excited about this one. Another big name release that is coming out on the 20th is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Y'all know that I'm trash for Riley Sager. Even though he is a very hit or miss author for me, I still find myself thoroughly engaged with his books, and this one sounds like it could be a new favorite. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope. Now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murders shocked the main coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. So this sounds like it's going to be a take on, oh my gosh, what's the name of that girl? Libby Borden? The Borden murders or something like that? I can't remember off the top of my head, but it sounds like it might be a play on that. Other than her denial after the killings, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set foot outside of Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. Stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy life. It's now 1983, and home health aide Kit McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to care for Lenora after her previous nurse led in the middle of the night. In her 70s and combined to a wheelchair, Lenora was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit starts to suspect Lenora might not be telling the complete truth, and that the seemingly harmless woman in her care could be far more dangerous than she first thought. That just sounds absolutely phenomenal. I want to read it. I want to know what secrets Lenora is hiding. I want to know if she was responsible for her parents' murders. I want to know all the things. This is definitely one of my most anticipated releases of 2023, and I will for sure be getting to this as soon as I possibly can. Next on the 20th, we have the newest thriller by Andrea Bartz called The Spare Room. She wrote We Were Never Here, and I actually quite enjoyed my reading experience of that one. It was definitely interesting. It was primarily following a toxic friendship, and I don't normally like those kind of tropes, but I was really intrigued by that one, and ultimately, I felt like it was well done. I know it doesn't get the highest reviews, but it kind of worked for me, and so I'm interested to see what Andrea Bartz does with this newest release. It follows our main character, Kelly. She has recently moved to Philadelphia, and her life has turned into a nightmare. She's friendless and jobless, and the lockdown has her trapped in a tiny apartment with the man she gave up everything for who's just called off their wedding. So it sounds like this might be set in the middle of a pandemic. All right, so this is awkward. She's stuck in the apartment with her fiance who has just called off their wedding. The only bright spot is her newly rekindled friendship with her childhood friend Sabrina, now a glamorous best-selling author with a handsome high-powered husband. When Sabrina and Nathan offer Kelly an escape hatch, volunteering the spare room of their remote Virginia mansion, she jumps at the chance to run away from her old life. There Kelly secretly finds herself falling for both her enchanting hosts until one night a wild and unexpected threesome leads the couple to open their marriage for her. Oh, okay, so I didn't I didn't see that coming. At first, Kelly loves being part of this risque world, but when she discovers that the last woman they invited into their marriage is missing, she starts to wonder if they could be dangerous and if she might be next. Okay, so that's actually a twist I didn't see coming. I don't think I read this synopsis all the way through. I'm not entirely sure if that's a plot that I'm wanting to go into, but it definitely sounds different. So if you liked Andrea Bart's last novel, if this sounds intriguing to you, it comes out on the 20th. And the final one that's coming out on the 20th that I want to talk to you about today is 
is Don't Forget the Girl by Rebecca McKenna. I'm pretty sure that this is a debut novel. It says, 12 years ago, 18-year-old University of Iowa freshman Abby Hartman disappeared. Now John Allen Blue, the serial killer suspected of a murder, is about to be executed. Abby's best friends, Bree and Chelsea, watch as Abby's memories unearthed and overshadowed by Blue and his flashier crimes. The friends, estranged in the wake of Abby's disappearance and suffering from years of unvoiced resentments, must reunite when a high-profile podcast dedicates its next season to Blue's murders. Tense and introspective, for readers of Megan Golden and Heather Dudenkoff, Don't Forget the Girl is an astonishing debut thriller that minds the complexities of friendship and the secrets between us that we may take to the grave. Okay, so instantly right off the bat, I'm getting What Lies in the Woods vibes from this, but I think what this is supposed to do is supposed to put a focus on the victims and not the serial killer. Abby's best friends are trying to thwart the attention that is being put on this serial killer. So maybe the serial killer is responsible for Abby's disappearance, but now there's a podcast coming out that's going to focus on the serial killer's crimes and they are kind of trying to make sure that Abby stays in the spotlight and that you don't forget the dead girls, right? Don't forget the girls. So I'm not entirely sure what direction this is going to take, but it really does sound interesting. And I want to see what Rebecca McKenna can kind of do with this story because there are definitely some very familiar plot lines and tropes in this that I can already tell, but I want to see if she's able to take it into a different direction. I have already added this to my TBR and I'm excited to get to it at some point in the future. And now we are moving on into the 27th, which will be the final week of releases for June, starting with Ashley Poston's new release, The Seven Year Slip. Sometimes the worst day of your life happens and you have to figure out how to live after it. So Clementine forms a plan to keep her heart safe, stay busy, work hard, find someone decent to love, and try to remember to chase the moon. The last one is silly and obviously metaphorical, but her aunt always told her that you needed at least one big dream to keep going, and for the last year, that plan has gone off without a hitch. The love part is hard because she doesn't want to get too close to anyone. She isn't sure her heart can take it. And then she finds a strange man standing in the kitchen of her late aunt's apartment, a man with kind eyes and a southern drawl and a taste for lemon pie, the kind of man that, before it all, she would have fallen head over heels for, and she might again, except he exists in the past, seven years ago to be exact, and she quite literally lives seven years in his future. Her aunt always said the apartment was a pinch in time, a place where moments blended together like watercolors, and Clementine knows that if she lets her heart fall, she'll be doomed. After all, love is never a matter of time, but a matter of timing. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be somewhat of a time travel romance, and that the guy exists seven years in the past, and our main character exists in what I assume is going to be in the present. Ashley Poston wrote The Dead Romantics, which I've heard nothing but great things about, and from what I understand, that deals with ghosts. So it sounds like her adult romances kind of have a speculative twist to this. So it actually sounds very sweet, very cute. And again, that one is coming out on the 27th. Also on the 27th, we have the next historical release from Beatrice Williams called The Beach at Summerlee. It looks like this might be set in two different timelines starting in June 1946. As the residents of Winthrop Island prepare for the first summer season after the sacrifice of war, a glamorous new figure moves into the guest cottage at Summerlee, the idyllic seaside estate of the wealthy Peabody family. To Amelia Winthrop, daughter of Summerlee's year-round caretaker and a descendant of the island settlers, all of Rainsford opens a window into a world of shining possibility. While Amelia spent the war years caring for her incapacitated mother, Olivia traveled the world, married fascinating men and involved herself in political causes. She's also the beloved aunt of the two surviving Peabody sons, Amory and Shep, with whom Amelia has a tangled romantic history. As the summers wear on, Amelia develops a deep rapport with Olive, who urges her to leave the island for a life of adventure, while romance blossoms with the sturdy and honorable Shep. But the heady promise of Peabody patronage is blown apart by the arrival of Sumner Fox, an FBI agent who demands Amelia's help to capture a Soviet agent who's transmitting vital intelligence on the West's atomic weapon program from somewhere inside the Summerlee estate. April 1954, eight years later, Summerlee is boarded up and Amelia has rebuilt her shattered life as a professor at Wellesley College when shocking news arrives from Washington. The traitor she helped convict is about to be swapped for an American spy imprisoned in the Soviet Union, but with a mysterious condition only Amelia can fulfill. A reluctant Amelia is summoned to CIA headquarters where she's forced to confront the harrowing consequences of her actions that fateful summer and a choice that can destroy the Peabody family and Amelia's chance for redemption all over again. All right, so that sounds fairly interesting. That's definitely not a topic I see covered all that often and it seems kind of Cold War is not nearly as popular to be covered as World War II. So if you are a fan of Beatrice Williams and this sounds of interest, it comes out on the 27th. Also coming out on the 27th is a thriller called The Night It Ended by Katie Garner. I've never heard of Katie Garner. This might be another debut. It says, from outside, criminal psychiatrist Dr. Madeline Pine's life appears picture perfect. She has a beautiful family, a successful mental health practice, and a growing reputation as an expert in female violence. But when she's called to help investigate a mysterious death at a boarding school for troubled teenage girls, Madeline hesitates. She's been through tragic cases before, and the one she was entangled in last 
last year nearly destroyed her. Yet she can't turn away when she hears about Charlie Ridley. After Charlie was found barefoot and in pajamas at the bottom of an icy ravine on campus, the police ruled her death a tragic accident. But the private investigator hired by her mother has his doubts. If it were Madeline's daughter who died, she'd want to know why. Arriving at the secluded campus in upstate New York, Madeline's met by an unhelpful skeleton staff and the four other students staying on campus during winter break. She seems to hold a piece of the puzzle and everyone has secrets, Madeline included. But who would kill to protect them? The stunning suspense debut is told with a narrative that intertwines with the transcript of an anonymous interview beginning a twisting path for nothing and no one is what it seems. It's sure to appeal to readers of Ruth Ware and Lucy Foley, fans of locked room mysteries and jaw-dropping twists. Okay, so this is probably one that I'm definitely going to be adding to my TBR. All right, y'all, we are getting there. Just three more to go. The next one coming out on the 27th that is getting quite a bit of buzz is The Wife App by Carolyn Mackler. It says, three best friends decide they're finally done with their ex-husbands taking their work as wives and moms for granted. They're ready to monetize the mental load, stick it to their exes, and have a wild ride in the process. Lauren, mother of twins, wakes up one morning to her wife alarm bells sounding. She sleuths on her husband's phone and stumbles on a dirty secret that explodes her marriage. Madeline has it all. A penthouse apartment, a perfect daughter, and no strings attached romps with handsome men. When she learns that she might lose her child to her ex in England, it stirs up a decades-old personal tragedy. Sophie, with too much FOMO and never enough money, obsesses over her ex-husband's family 2.0, all while keeping her true desires hidden even from herself. It starts as a joke during a tipsy night out, as Lauren, Madeline, and Sophie rail against everything wives do for free. Let's build an app that monetizes the mental load, and maybe get revenge on our exes in the process. Soon, the wife app is born, and before long, it's the fastest-growing startup in New York City. But then, life intervenes, love intervenes, ex-husbands intervene, and the consequences are bigger than anything Lauren, Madeline, or Sophie could ever have expected. So I'm actually highly intrigued by this premise. I personally am not a mother, but I do already have quite an intense mental load between working full-time, doing booktube, doing all the house cleaning and cooking, and eventually starting my master's degree later this year. So I completely understand, and I want to see what this premise is going to be like. I want to see how you can monetize that, what the wife app actually is. It is getting a lot of buzz still, and I would probably be really interested to check this one out. Another one that is getting a lot of buzz, it doesn't really sound that interesting to me personally, but it might sound interesting to you, is The Rachel Incident by Caroline O'Donohue. Rachel Murray is 21 years old, platonically infatuated with her housemate James, and less than platonically infatuated with her enigmatic married English professor, Dr. Byrne. Over the course of a year, as Rachel and James's lives become more and more deeply entwined with those of Dr. Burns and his perfect wife, Deanie, tensions rise and a shocking secret threatens everything they hold dear. The Rachel Incident is a sharp, poignant, and beautifully told story of losing and finding yourself and the lengths we will go to for those we love. If I remember correctly from what I read on Amazon, I think this might also deal with the main character having an affair with her professor, and that just doesn't really interest me all that much. But like I said, this is getting a ton of buzz, and so it could definitely be one to keep on my radar. And again, this comes out on the 27th. And then the final one that I'm going to talk to you about today is another one that is getting a lot of buzz. It is called Dead Eleven by Jimmy Giuliano. Clifford Island. When Willow Stone finds these words written on the floor of her deceased son's bedroom, she's perplexed. She never heard of it before, but soon learns it's a tiny island off Wisconsin's Door County Peninsula, 200 miles from Willow's home. Why would her son write this on his floor? Determined to find answers, Willow sets out for the island. After a few days on Clifford, Willow realizes this place is not normal. Everyone seems to be stuck in a particular day in 1994. They wear outdated clothing, avoid modern technology, and perhaps most mystifyingly, watch the O.J. Simpson car chase every evening. When she asks questions, people are evasive, and she learns one thing. Close your curtains at night. High schooler Lily Becker has lived on Clifford her entire life, and she is sick of the island's twisted mythology and adhering to the rules. She's been to the mainland, and everyone is normal there, so why is Clifford so weird? Lily is determined to prove that the islander's beliefs are a sham, but are they? Five weeks after Willow arrives on the island, she disappears. Willow's brother Harper comes to Clifford, searching for his sister, and when he learns the truth that this island is far more sinister than anyone could have imagined, he is determined to blow the whole thing open if he can get out alive. So the premise of this sounds really unique and really, really fascinating. And I want to understand why this island is so infatuated with this one particular day in 1994. What is going on? Is there a supernatural element to this? I'm not entirely sure. So the premise has me intrigued, but I think I would need to hear like a little bit more about it before I'm making a final decision on whether or not to add it to my TBR. But like I said, it's getting a whole heckin' ton of buzz. And so if it sounds interesting to you, you might definitely want to add this to your TBR. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are the 20 releases that I wanted to talk to you about today that are coming out in June of 2023. As always, this list is not meant to be comprehensive. It is meant to be a list of things that I personally find interesting or books that I think you might find interesting. So if there are other June releases that you would like to talk about, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'm sure others would love to hear. And please definitely let me know what your most anticipated releases for June are. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.